Hi everybody. So it's been a while um, since I posted my last video and trust me, I have recorded some videos but didn't post and um, then I knew I needed to post this video but every time I picked up the camera, you know, well, the, my phone, I just didn't look right on the camera. So I needed to wait a bit. <clears throat> so first things first, I took a leave of absence from the program and that was was hard. It was a decision I needed to make right away. My mom got ill and there's only me here with her. And I know you guys heard me talk about her already, the smart girl. So anyway, and then there was some things that took place at the school that were just a little unsettling for me. And I figured that uh, I needed to address my mental health, my physical health, and my mom, first and foremost, she needed me. So I took leave of absence from the program and, um, you know, I spoke with the creator of the program, um, Dr. Wagner, and he helped. He's an extremely helpful person, extremely understanding. Gosh, I like him. I just do. I don't know him much at all, but I like him. He understood. And uh, so anyway, if I decide to go back, which I have to let the school know, Dr. Wagner, by uh, January 13th, 2023. And if I decide to go back into the program, I'll start all over in May. You have to start over because it's a, a lockstep program. You know, everything builds on the other. So, I got that out of the way. I know I'm going to get so many questions about what really happened or this or that. And um, that's about the gist of it. So, I'm working on me. And uh, this morning, it just hit me. It's time. So, I threw on some hoops because I love um, uh, Simone Smith hoops. And uh, a little bit of mascara came out on my mom's porch so that we can talk all right so now i got that out of the way i really want to talk about something that is two things in this video which are uber important so when i was uh, studying prerequisites for schools i noticed that some required anatomy and some didn't and i know that uh, the focus for anatomy is different from campus to campus so I'm starting with this anatomy thing because I know I mentioned in one of my videos that I was going online, um, YouTube, you know, studying because I hadn't had anatomy and physiology. And even within the NSU program, um, things are taught differently from campus to campus. So you can't, um, you can't do research for one place and think that that's gonna be the ticket for you at another place within the NSU system because it's different. And there are four campuses and there will be more coming soon. Wagner's brilliant, this freaking guy is brilliant. So anyway, for the North, the Fort Lauderdale campus, um, anatomy and physiology are the weed and seed subjects for a lot. And there were people in my class who hadn't had it, so I wasn't the only one, but I never had anatomy and physiology before and it kicked my behind but then I ran into uh, a tutor and he, he just made a world of difference he was a, a physician in uh, Nigeria and he saw me drawing one day when the campus was closed I was there with some of my classmates and I was drawing I think at that time I was drawing the brachial plexus if I'm not mistaken anyway I started studying with him. Sometimes I studied until 12, one o'clock in the morning at his house and then came home. My mom would be calling like, hey, are you okay? But I got it in and it made such a difference, such a difference. So, but I had classmates who hadn't had the course either like Tatiana, but she's like a total brainiac from Ethiopia. And Scott, oh, Scotty, really smart as can be so their struggle wasn't the same as mine so I would say to anyone 
because even students who had had anatomy just the semester before were like, this is not the anatomy I took last semester. This is crazy. So I'm going to tell you that it's uber important that you have some type of anatomy background. Some schools require it as a prerequisite. Others don't. My school doesn't. Get it in. If that looks like for you, deep diving on YouTube, get anatomy in, get physiology in. Do not start this program not having any of that under your belt, unless you're some total Tatiana or Scotty or, you know, people who haven't had it is what I'm thinking about people in my program who haven't had it. Those who had like Ernesto and Ifat and Angie, Joshua, uh, they could roll right through it, you know, but I couldn't. So that's my advice to you. Now I want to move into something else. So I was talking about the environment for the school. You guys, it is uber important. And I didn't know this before I got into the program. So I didn't know to look for it. But in like there was a student in my class who um, was at a, another, she was in a different program, an AA program. And she just sings praises about the NSU for a Lauderdale program, you know, like if she ever dropped out for a reason or whatever, she'd only want to come back there, that type of thing, you know. Um, but I listen to other people and read comments and reviews. And for the most part, even in my interview, like my Jacksonville interview, uh, some of the students were, well, prospective, some of the applicants, there it is, the applicants were talking about how their interviews were like totally crazy, um, challenging, wanting to know, you know, science, this, and how smart are you with, you know, that type of thing. But that, that attitude kind of bleeds over into the, the, the overall morale in the program, really, and, and the environment, the nature under, the, the nature by which people approach you and and address you with certain issues, right? And it, it always starts from the top. I always say that, like, crap flows down only. It doesn't shoot up unless there's a busted pipe. So, at any rate, what I'm getting to is a lot of AA programs are extremely competitive and they pit student against student. And that's why programs don't always have all of the students graduating. You know, I, if you do some research on it, you'll see many programs can start out with 18 students, but only 12 graduate. And it's not always that they can't get the material, but it's the, the, the competitiveness, the backstabbing, backbiting, just the nature of the program and how they feed that to the students. So the class of 23 at Fort Lauderdale, Nova Southeastern University, Fort Lauderdale campus decided we don't want that. And so when we came in the door, class of 24, we just had this pounded into us, you're all one. Everybody works as a unit. You help everyone, right? So we didn't know that there was any other alternative because nothing else was given to us. And it works, it works. In our, in our Discord group, when someone posts a question, there's always gonna be an answer. Somebody help me figure this out. Or in our group sessions, we're not just clingy and no one else can come into the group and learn, right? If something isn't working for you in one group, in one study group, then you go to the next study group and you're welcomed in. Hey, yeah, I got that. That type of thing. And then you take the information back to your other group, right? So 
everybody's learning and everybody's towing the line and that that works so now i'm speaking to other uh aa programs and crna programs medical programs all together if you can teach and this is coming from uh, someone who is um, an educator my major is english and psychology minor in something else or whatever but teaching you know secondary education esol when you can get students to move as a group to appreciate each other as a unit to think of each other not as i'm better than you but here let me help you there may be a time when i need it too but if there's never a time i want to see you do well you will have greater success when it comes to uh, keeping all of the students from beginning to end in the program. And I'm not selling NSU to anyone. I'm not selling the Fort Lauderdale campus to anyone. I can't tell you that the Tampa campus works this way. I can't tell you that the Jacksonville campus works this way or the Colorado campus. I can only tell you about the Fort Lauderdale campus. We are not worried about curves because I know that's an issue right someone explained that to me and so I had to look into that and I even contacted one of my classmates to ask hey is everybody still sharing the same the answer is yes you guys worried about the curve and different things you know who's setting what no we don't really have a curve environment here and it works like so do research, be nosy, go to events where you know that the students will be for the program that you want to attend and listen, ear hustle, butt in, be nosy, ask questions because this is your life. This is the trajectory of your life that's on the line for the next however many months. I know that the program in Wisconsin has extended their um, their class uh, program because they want to not have it so vigorous and want the students to lay back a little bit. And that's good too. At the Fort Lauderdale campus, it's fast. So school started on the 23rd. That was the first day of classes on the 23rd. But I hit the ground running around maybe May 1st. It was May 1st, pew, and it did not slow down. And I was very distraught about having to take anatomy on a graduate level for the first time ever during the summer. So that's an express term. We all know that it's like nine weeks. You're in and out. And it was rough. It was rough. I totally disagree with that. Like 100%. I don't think that those classes, anatomy and physiology, should even be taught in an express <laughs> term. But it is. It just is. And um, one of my instructors is a hand surgeon. And then there's Dr. Purvis, who I think does a phenomenal job at running her department. So that's really, you know, yeah, she's there for questions, but it is what it is and it's, it's rough. So let's get back to that environment. With my class, we share our notes. Somebody makes Ankis, somebody makes uh, Quizlets. The students from the class before us, if they have Quizlets, they're out there. But what you don't want to do is study, if you're in the Fort Lauderdale program, then you don't want to study stuff from the Tampa program because they have different instructors there, you know? And so the work is different. So, you know, keep that in mind. And then as far as the environment is concerned, you know, you really want to listen to what people have to say about instructors too. So let me tell you this. With the Fort Lauderdale campus, because that's all I know, um, I can remember a situation one time where I was in the um, anesthesia lab class. It's Dr. I, I'm sorry, not Dr. Professor Babiak. And 
she was asking some questions from our drug sheet. So remember I showed you that drug sheet that had all those drugs on it and then you had to tell the concentration in the in the vial and then the concentration for what you, the, the dosage for the patients and what type of drug it is, all that. Okay, so in our class this day, Professor Babiat was asking questions about one of the drugs because we were uh, at that time going over Neil's IV man. Look that up, look that up. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, Neil's IV man. And um, I didn't know the answers because they were on the drug sheet. But remember how I said I didn't wanna just learn the drug sheet? I needed to learn the drugs in one of my earlier videos why well, I ended up learning the drug sheet because it was a test and I needed to get all that stuff in, right? Okay, so, <clears throat> but my brainiac friend Ernesto, he knew the answers. <laughs> I wouldn't expect any different. I call him ketamine. I think he's gonna be a doctor at the end of the day. Yeah, so at any rate, um, so there was someone who came late to class because we had this really tough exam in anatomy, which, you know, kind of held everybody up. And Professor Babiak was extremely understanding, you know, that she had to teach that class again, and she was okay with it. And I stayed after to go through the class again. And she asked these questions. And I said, well, I'm one of the students who just learned the sheet. Now, from what I get from other reviews another campus you know and i'm saying the same thing i could have been met with well why the hell don't you know it you know but you you should well then why are you here but baby i wasn't like that she says okay you're gonna need to know this stuff so you gotta get it in kobe that's the way you talk you see i'm 50 but even if i was 20 like some of my classmates i'm due respect right just as much respect as baby is due because she's a human. She's an adult, but even if she were a child, she's a professional and she understands how that works. I don't think that my personality goes well on a campus where I feel like I'm being hazed all the time or I'm being spoken down to or I feel like I'm underfoot for any reason. Failing a test, not knowing an answer to a question, not completing an assignment, not showing up for class, whatever it is, respect is first and foremost. Secondly, I just signed up to be $121,000 or so in the hole. And that's before, that's only the tuition, not the loans that I need to help me so I'm going to come out maybe $225 in the hole. And the last thing I need from anyone is to be beaten down. It's improper. It's out of order. And Babby Act didn't do that. Now, I don't have a lot of experiences with a lot of the um, instructors because I wasn't there for long. I didn't just leave. It's been about a month that I've been gone. So I didn't have a whole lot of personal interactions with anyone. Not everyone is a teacher and you can tell that, but the material is there. And when you're encouraged properly to learn the material, then that makes a difference in how things go for you in the program. It makes a difference even in the fact that I have to consider coming back, whether or not I want to return to the program, which I do at the moment, the environment plays a part in my decision because now I've been there and I know what to expect when I go back. So I don't feel like I'm going back to a hellhole environment. You know, there may be one or two people there who have that mentality that the students are underfoot and it shows in how they relate to you, but not everyone is that way, right? So there are enough people there that make me want to come back to the environment. And that's great, but what if you were, say, at a different school and the instructors 
we're all, they have that mentality, that underfoot mentality. Who wants to go back to that? Who wants to stay in that? How much drive do you have to have to endure things like that? Well, at 49, I just freaking don't have that kind of drive. You cannot just speak to me or treat me any way and it's unanswered. I'm not the rah, rah fussy type, you know, but there are other ways to get things done and to be heard. And that's how I am. I mean, I pledged in a sorority and I was hazed a bit there and I didn't like that. So when I brought in girls into my sorority, I pledged them too. I didn't haze. And they were all one unit. They moved today as one unit. And I pledged that line, shoot, 2003 or four. Maybe, I think it was 2004. And those girls are like this. Yes, three knots the hard way. And that matters. And I think that that is something that I hope that people watching this video who are teachers or anything that you get from this. When you, when you treat people kindly as humans with respect, you can get better results. There you go. <clears throat> so now in my next video, I'm going to talk about a few other things that I think that are really important, but we're at 21 minutes now and I don't like to really hold you guys like that, you know, cause there's no back and forth. It's just me talking, right? Uh, so anyway, I'm doing okay. I am better than I was. This was really hard. It was a, a mental struggle. It has been, I mean, it is continuously. A mental struggle I get up in the morning and I study anatomy when I can um, I go over the materials that I was able to keep from the program which isn't very much but I go over that stuff over and over it'll be perfected when I get back and then I'll be able to move on to the, the next test and you know but it's fast-paced y'all listen we had a test in anatomy every other week and every off week was physiology and then you had tests from all of the other didactic uh courses um yeah so nsu doesn't start out like many programs start out with um uh clinicals you know maybe the by the second or third week you're in clinicals nsu doesn't do that we do didactics for like the first 15 uh months or so and like uh, clinicals will start for my class in January and then by August it's all clinicals and everybody gets to get shipped out to wherever they want to go across the country which is so freaking exciting um, anyway <clears throat> the class of 24 is great for NSU Fort Lauderdale they are so sailing and it's a one unit environment thanks to the class of 23. Thank you guys so much for helping and setting such a good example and deciding to change the environment because I believe I heard that Fort Lauderdale was like the most competitive campus to get into. It was the hardest campus to get into, most prestigious campus to get into, but the class of 23 decided to change that. And it's a great thing. It's also great that NSU allowed the change. That's huge. That's that that's monumental. NSU allowed the change. So it's trickling from the top still. You see? So let me say again, I'm not advocating for NSU. I'm advocating for the environment that NSU fosters at the Fort Lauderdale campus. Yeah, and I think that, I hope that this video uh, I hope that this video helps. I just hope it becomes contagious. There it is. I want other schools to be the same way. I think that it's important that there is um, a clear presence of diversity 
in the programs. So that's something that I'm going to talk about in a video too, is diversity. Okay, so we're at 25 minutes. I'm going to stop there and say thank you and wish everybody luck and keep going. Um, so far, I'm going back. If it changes, I'll let you know. In the meantime, I'm you know, trying to find work here. I don't want to go back to what I was doing in Jacksonville, doing lashes and brows and stuff, because I didn't bring my equipment with me for the sole purpose of not doing a lot of that here, you know, or being tempted to do anything while I'm in school. So I'm looking into like Medicaid providing and um, something else that's really quick. You know, it's hurricane season coming up and got all the fires. There's gonna be mudslides soon. Um, Insurance claims adjusting. There's a little course at FSCJ that's like 115 bucks, 40 hours online, and you're in, right? So <clears throat> that's where I am now. Those things also allow me the time to continue studying and preparing and working on my mental and physical health and, you know, getting things in place for my mom because she's older and she's bound to get sick again, right? We all do. And so I need to have a system in place in case that happens again so that that's not addressed um, the same way, hopefully, you know, when I get back into the program. So that's that. Until next time. Bye-bye.